G'day guys, Caboose from Dodge This here, and for this video I'm going to be going over the Subdirector Null Encounter. I normally don't do videos on encounters, but I've yet to find one that explains this encounter properly, and a regular commenter on our channel, Noob Mister, asked in a follow-up to our previous videos how I changed the encounters to fall more in line with ArenaNet's original goals on the Guild Wars 2 Trinity. This seemed like a good way to kill two birds with one stone, so here we go. First up, before attempting the Null Encounter, you should do the Solo Kanach Encounter, just so you can learn how the Mine Detector works and how to kite launch or pull mobs into the mines. Since Kanach is immune to all of your attacks, you have to disarm the mines with the Mine Detector and kite Kanach into them to beat him. Use Ability 1 on the Detector to show what type the mines are, then use the corresponding 2, 3 or 4 ability to disarm them. He will regularly knock you back and detonate all the mines, but as long as you're careful with your positioning, you should have him licked in no time. I've actually seen posts on the forums of players complaining that Kanach is too hard, and I've got to say, if you can't manage that solo encounter, don't even bother trying with the Null encounter. Seriously, either practice Kanach until you can do it, or give up. There are plenty of other ways to get your meta achievement complete. Now, on to Null himself. Like Kanach, he has a knockback and can detonate and rearm all of the mines. However, he is not immune to all damage like Kanach. Instead, every 45 seconds, Null will put a shield on himself, causing him to become immune to all damage. You can tell he has this by the huge purple bubble he'll put over himself. The only way to remove this is to drag him over a mine that has already been disarmed. It's always a good idea to keep a mine near Null disarmed so that when his shield does come up, you can kite him right into it. You must do this as quickly as possible, for reasons I'll explain later. At 75% health, Null will summon lightning orbs into the fight. All you can do is avoid these as they are immune to all damage and control effects. At 50% health, Null will start spawning auto repair turrets. He spawns these in very regularly, so I only recommend destroying the ones that spawn near where you are fighting him. Ranged fighters might want to consider going for the ones further away if he puts his shield up while all the mines are detonated. The real problems begin at 25%, when Null inflicts a stacking damaging debuff on the entire party. From here on, it's a race to kill him before he kills you. As long as you avoid standing on the mines and getting hit with the lightning orbs, you should be able to manage this. If you have party members with low damage builds that are struggling to bring him down in time, get them to focus on disarming the mines, especially the poison ones, and keep dragging Null through them as you bring him down. This will make a huge difference. Basically, for the first 75% of Null's life, you have plenty of breathing room and should take this time to learn where the mines spawn, the best ways to avoid the lightning orbs, and how to kite Null as a group. If you have a party member that can't grasp kiting Null, do your best to explain them how to do it before he gets to 25% health. If your party hasn't worked out how to get him onto a disarmed mine quickly by then, you're not going to be able to kill him in time. Alright, now let's go over some of the problems groups have with this encounter and some of the bugs. First up, there are many people complaining that Null bugs out and puts his shield up right after or very soon after the party removes it. This isn't so much a bug as it is a design flaw. Null's shield ability has a cooldown, just like any of our skills, and it begins coming off cooldown not after his shield is removed, but after he casts it. His shield is on a 45 second cooldown, so if it takes your group 45 seconds or longer to get that shield off, he's going to cast it straight away once you do. Just be sure to get that shield off as soon as possible to prevent this from happening. The other bug is that sometimes when you disarm a mine, the bloody thing will detonate for no apparent reason. All I can recommend is keep trying until you get one that doesn't. There was a really nasty bug that has since been fixed where Null became immune to all conditions after his first shield was removed. This has since been fixed, so if you couldn't damage Null fast enough previously, you might want to give it another go now. Now, here's what I would change to make this fight more in line with the Guild Wars 2 Trinity, as well as to make it a more enjoyable encounter. First up, I'd add a vocal cue to Null's mine rearming and mine detonating abilities. Not only does this mean you don't have to keep squinting at Null to see what he's doing or keep an eye on the chat log, but it also adds character to the encounter. I'd also add a vocal cue to indicate the abilities he gains at 75%, 50%, and 25% health, as they'd also help newer players get an idea as to what the hell was going on. Next, I'd make it so that activating his shield puts a 10 second cooldown on his detonate mines ability and vice versa. It is really cheap that he can trigger these abilities 5 seconds apart or even back to back, especially during the final phase. I'd also have his shield ability start coming off cooldown after the shield is removed, rather than when he casts it. 
finally, I'd implement my version of Defiance as gone over in the last video. Having to stay close together so that you can kite him into mines doesn't work very well in an encounter with so much AoE damage about. It would be much better if you had the option to use launches, fears and pulls as well to ensure Null goes into a mine as quickly as possible. All in all, bugs aside, I do feel Null is an interesting encounter, however it's plain to see that he could have used a bit more testing before being unleashed on the public. Well, I hope this has been helpful to those of you struggling with this encounter. I'd also recommend using a voice chat program like Ventrilo, TeamSpeak or Mumble as good communication helps a lot with this fight. Lastly, I'd like to make a request of our viewers. If this video helped you beat the encounter, please leave a reply to the post on the official forum so that others may find this guide as well. Also remember that while it's easier to leave a YouTube comment, if you want any chance of ArenaNet paying any attention to any of the suggestions made in this video, or your additional suggestions, leave a post on the official forums. There is a link to them in the About section of this video. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope to see you next time. Instead of working on monster AI and making them use abilities and act similarly to the players, they were given basic AI and attacks. The same was done with the bosses. However, ArenaNet knew that because of their simplistic AI, the bosses would fall prey to the control abilities players had at their disposal. So they invented the unshakable and defiance effects. This is the absolute stupidest thing ArenaNet has ever done. No, mine seems to be bigger. Oh my god, they're crossing the swords! <laughs> We're crossing the streams! Well, that's a more G-rated way of putting it. <laughs>